Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the game which was played in 2002 during the 35th Chess Olympiad in Bledz in Slovenia. Very beautiful uh, city. If you haven't seen that, you should go there. There is a beautiful castle, you know, with the lake, you know, the, the iconic view of Slovenia. Uh, and this was quite an event. I would like to show you the picture. So here we go, 135 teams in the open tournament. Can you imagine? That's quite an event. Uh, um, and uh, the Russian team won, but who was playing in the Russian team? Gary Kasparov, Alexander Grishuk, Kalifman, Morozevich, Peter Svidler, Rublevsky, uh, only superstar, so uh, they were winning. However, the second place got the Hungarian team with Peter Leko and Judith Polgar on the second board. So this was quite a golden era for um, for Hungarian team. Uh, and really great tournament and I would like to show you the game uh, between Judith Polgar she was 26 years old at that time, so uh, not any more sharp playing teenager uh, who someone could underestimate, but one of the best players in the world still playing very active and sharp chess. Uh, and Judith at that time, her ranking was 2685 uh, and in this game she's gonna play as white. And her opponent, well-known Azerbaijan Grandmaster Shahriar Mamedyarov, uh, his ranking at that time 2500 he's gonna play as black and the point is that he was at that time 17 years old so he was the teenager uh, who had to face one of the best players in the world so without further ado let's see what happened on the board uh, Judith Polgar opens with e4. We have e5, knight on f3, knight on c6, bishop on b5, uh, Rui Lopez on the board, a6, bishop on a4, knight on f6, and now castle. Knight on e4, this is all the theory. This pawn, of course, can be taken. Uh, d4, b5, kicking the bishop, bishop on b3, and now d5. D takes on e5 and now bishop on e6, consolidating the position, creating the, the very solid uh, structure. The bishop works as a pawn for a while, uh, but you know, this is just for a while and this was played hundreds of times. Knight on b2 now by Judith Polgar and now knight on c5, attacking the bishop, c3 uh, and now d4. And here in this position, what white usually play is uh, bishop on e6. And after knight on e6, the game can continue for example c takes on d4 uh, knight c on d4 uh, and this is the main line so uh, a4 is possible by white knight on e4 is possible also knight on d4 can take the one of the of the knight so all of this was played before uh, and also the move which is played by uh, by Judith Polgar it was played before mostly by Gary Kasparov he played a lot of beautiful games with knight on g5 Look at this move. Uh, so the main idea here, it looks like uh, Shahriar Mamedyarov didn't know that move because the main line is simply take the knight. Okay, you take the knight, you don't get, you know, um, the, the very strong attack. And Shahriar probably thought, okay, this is too dangerous. And uh, as you did, is very sharp tactician player. And probably this is some trap. So he didn't take it. But I will show you uh, how the main line goes. And it was played by a lot of players. Uh, Vishwanathan Anand, for example, played it many times. Uh, and of course, uh, mostly uh, black draw that game. So everything is fine with this variation. Uh, this is the main idea. Queen on g5 and how uh, white responds with the queen on f3. And the main line is the castle and getting back the piece over here uh, and the game can continue. And it was played, as I said, many times. The point is you cannot really defend the knight, okay? If you try to do it with the bishop, let's say bishop on d7, uh, there is a problem. F7, you know, is under attack. So bishop on F7. And after, let's say, king on uh, E7, bishop D5, winning back the material and winning even more material. So uh, this is not possible to play. And if king on D7, this was also played, but this is even worse. Because after bishop on D5, the threat is obvious. So bishop on D5, queen on D5, Bishop on d6, otherwise if you move the king, uh, 
you know you're gonna lose the more material so bishop on d6 and now c takes on d4 attacking the knight uh and now knight on d4 is the is the best in this position but it still doesn't save the game because knight c4 knight c4 uh, with the attack on the queen so crazy lines you know very very sharp and uh, after queen on g6 let's say uh, e takes on d6 and there are uh, another tricks another threats here a uh, very sharp position and uh, it's it you have to know how to play it uh, and Shahriar try something different he played bishop on d5 uh, and this is actually losing move however it's not forced it's still you know a lot uh, to play so so uh, we have knight on f7. So uh, Shahriar, you didn't take the my knight on g5 for free. I'm gonna take the pawn, and now uh, I'm forking you. So you have to take it. Now how to take it? If you take with the bishop, there is a problem because bishop on f7, king f7, a queen f3, uh, and you're gonna win the material back. So let's say king on g8 uh, and position of black is just hopeless so uh, king on f7 was played by Mamedyarov and now queen on f3 so so pretty standard stuff and now king on e6 king on e6 defending the bishop as the bishop is attacked twice so already a very very interesting and sharp game uh, we have queen on g4 uh, checking the king and now uh, what to play next if you try to take then of course uh, knight f3 and you just gonna be you you just gonna be destroyed the the rook gonna join the bishop gonna join to the to the game and you just gonna be destroyed uh, and if you try something like king on e7 uh, then actually e6 wins the game bishop on e6 rook e1 and uh, and i'm not gonna show you the the rest of the variation because this is almost the same what happened in the game uh, Shahriar play king on f7 and after queen on f5 uh, king on e7 he could try to go for for king on g8 uh, but e6 with the very simple checkmating threat so um, if queen on e7 then bishop on d5 and winning even more material uh, and if knight on e5 the move recommended by the stockfish uh, it's it, it's better but it's still losing queen on e5 knight on b3 and after queen on f5 uh, still the same on the board just you know a couple of less pieces queen on e7 queen d5 now with the attack on the rook so probably knight on e1 uh, and after queen on a8 queen e8 uh, c takes on d4 and the material is almost equal white has only one extra pawn but look at this this guy is not gonna move anywhere and that is a huge problem for for black so definitely white is winning here but that was the best move king on g8 very passive shahriar try something else king on e7 and we get almost the same position uh, which i just show you uh, after e6 bishop on e6 rook on e1 um, and here mighty stockfish uh, says okay give up this material give up this knight uh we're not gonna win but this is still the best okay and play queen on d7 the problem is after queen on c5 uh, and let's say king on d8 uh, the king cannot really escape because a uh, queen on g5 with check and now if the king moves uh, then of course this bishop is hanging okay so uh black would be totally lost uh, and also the, the queen would be pinned so bishop on e7 probably but then queen on g7 rook on gn can try to harass the the queen queen h7 uh, let's say bishop on d5 trying to do some counterplay but simply bishop on d5 uh, queen d5 knight on f3 and this is completely winning for for white three past pawn connected past pawns and uh, yeah the material is equal and you even cannot take this knight because the the rook is hanging so of course that that's not even possible so a uh, queen on d7 was the best option however mamed yarov of course play more logical moves and he go queen on d6 defending the the knight and defending the bishop the problem is uh this doesn't help and now there is only one move which is winning in this position so feel free to pause the video and f and try to you know find the winning continuation for white while i enjoy my cup of tea
Okay, ready? So uh, the only move actually is bishop on e6 and this is winning move. Now we have knight on e6 uh, and here you can have two ways of winning. Knight on b3, this is this is okay, and knight on e4. Knight on e4 was played by Judith Polgar. Knight on b3 uh, is also okay uh, because now uh, whatever black plays, for example, uh, you know, try to run with the king, king on d7, knight c5, king c8, uh, rook e6 winning this material, uh, and even queen on c5 doesn't help because rook e5 uh, with the with the check and uh, attack on the queen that wins the game. But you did play more forced variation, knight on e4 with the attack on the queen, and queen doesn't have much choice. Uh, queen on e5 trying to exchange, however, Judith doesn't want to exchange. She wants to bring more pieces to the game. Bishop on g5 with check. Uh, and now the point is you cannot really take the bishop because uh, this pin would be, you know, devastating. So uh, king on d7 and now knight c5 with check uh, and the uh, knight is pinned and also the queen is under attack. Uh, and there is no way to save it. So uh, bishop on c5 was played in the game. But you did, you did could just take the, the queen on, on e5. This is also winning. However, she played queen on f7. Much stronger move. And now whatever black plays is losing. So for example, knight on e7, uh, then rook on e5, uh, winning the material and, and the game. Of course, this is completely winning for white, so it doesn't work. Uh, if king on c8, saying, okay, uh, take some material and, and I'm fine, uh, then still rook on e5, knight on e5, queen on e6, uh, knight on d7, saving some, but but still c takes on d4, and black even cannot take this this pawn because rook gonna join with the uh, with the attack on the on the knight. So probably bishop on b6, and this is of course also a winning for white. Uh, Shahriar tries king on d6, so bringing the king to the center, uh, but now instead of taking the the queen, we have bishop on e7. And now if knight on e7, then uh, simply rook takes on, on e5. If the king starts to run, then of course black gonna lose more material in the game. So uh, not really the, the greatest idea. King e5 also doesn't help because now rook on e1 and that's uh, that's that's just a checkmate where, wherever on d6 or d5 this is a checkmate. So uh, not possible. Shahriar try uh, king on d5 and once he made that move, uh, he just resigned as... Uh, 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 there is no hope for him. Uh, so in this position the game ended. Uh, Judith Polgar won. And now the continuation. Queen on f3. Uh, and of course if king on c4. Then this is a checkmate. And if black tries to you know throw, throw the queen. White can take the queen and win the game of course. Uh, but also c4 is, is, is much faster to win. And that would be also a checkmate. So what a beautiful game by, by uh, Judith Polgar. Uh, it was only 23 moves. So that's the, the chess miniature. Very beautiful. If you like it, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. Uh, and if you don't want to miss any other beautiful games. Press subscribe, smash bell button, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.